And this is Manwe and Nicola. Welcome. <coughs> introduce yourselves. All right. Thank so, you. hi, everyone. <coughs> so, to introduce myself, my name is Nicola. I work as a security engineer in Switzerland, so I do pen testing for a living. I also do a lot of CTFs uh, everywhere in the world. I do speak at different conferences like DEF CON, Ash Days, etc. about various subjects like uh, web app security, hardware, uh, vending machines, etc. I'm also a hacker, but in the mad scientist's way, since I like to break stuff. Most of the time I break stuff and I cannot <laughs> repair them. <laughs> but <laughs> I like to, open, uh, to crack open some uh, things, try to learn how it works, how it functions, and hopefully try to find uh, nice things to, to actually show people how things work, etc. I also love beer, and I brew them myself. So maybe if you want to chat with us, tomorrow or this evening, you can just buy me a beer and I will chat a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, my name is Manoe. I work uh, in the same company in Switzerland. I'm doing pen tests. Uh, I'm also a member of the team uh, Zero Day Sober for the CTF. I'm the developer of Fireforce. It's the Firefox extension for performing a uh, brute force attack on the formula. And uh, I'm a black metal fan, so Norway is really a good place for me. <laughs> so for introduce, we talked a little about password. Uh, we all know password sucks. It's not cool, it's not easy, but it's used everywhere. So managing password is really hard. Uh, you need to have a different password for every seat. You, have to, uh, you need to have strong password. Uh, we tend to re reuse passwords and uh, don't have password scheme. Uh, of course, there are a lot of password manager. It's good thing. It's secure. You only need uh, one password for control them all. Uh, a lot of them exist in uh, different format, in different platform. But password manager also sucks. Because if someone gets your root password, uh, he can access all your data. Uh, there are a lot of tools for cracking password. Uh, keep us to John, uh, the password safe cracker. Uh, how, do you, how do you use your password manager in travel? How do you <coughs> back up your database? And how do you be sure that your data is uh, encrypted and uh, secure? So for the backup, uh, do, do you really want to, to put your uh, database in, uh, in the internet with uh, Dropbox, uh, Google Drive, or Mega? Uh, are you sure it's uh, really a good idea? We see in the past that this solution uh, has been compromised. So it's possible to have access to your, to your data. And of course, now, there is PRISM. So the government has access directly to all the data and directly to all your password. So what we can do, we think that passwords are like uh, keys, but for the, our online uh, access. So why don't, why don't we store them or use them like uh, real keys? You always have your keys on your pocket. Uh, maybe you have a backup of your keys, but you don't care because you never lost your keys. And you never give your keys to anyone. So we create a project named uh, Password. It's uh, like keyring, but uh, it's for your password. You always have uh, the device with you and you use them uh, when you want to. <coughs> so why we choose the name uh, Password? Because he, we manage password with hardware. So it's the combination of the two names. Uh, with a strong Belgian accent, it means Eve. It's a password. 
and uh, although the, the name password uh, is already used, so we need to change the double S with double five. <coughs> <laughs> so what are the features of a password? It's easy to use. We have uh, four touch uh, buttons to navigate, uh, one LCD screen, uh, one that eight uh, inches, uh, and we develop a client application for create your, your password and uh, plot some stuff. It's safe to use. Uh, everything is uh, encrypted with uh, an AES key. Uh, the password and the data are stored in the SD card, and the key is stored on the, on, on the device, and it is not possible to retrieve it. We hope so. <laughs> uh, you need a pin code to unlock the device before you use it. And uh, if, when you want to unlock the device, if you make it false uh, three times, the, the key is uh, reset, so it's not possible to, to find it. Uh, you can use password for the user password and also for OTP. So uh, at this time, it's only compatible with TOTP uh, implementation. It's the, the one used for the Google Auth. Uh, and it can it can type your password for you because it's a, a Teensy. <coughs> so you can just plug in and uh, it's viewed as a, a keyboard and it automatically types the password for you. And it works on uh, nearly every kind of device. We make some tests on uh, Android phone and uh, it works. The device is free to use. After the conference, we post all the code, uh, code source and even the plan for the, the case, so you can print your own. And it's really easy to make one. You just need some uh, soldering iron and uh, a frame with a 3D printer. So, <coughs> to build a password like we did, you only need a TNC 3.0 that you can buy for 19 bucks. You also need to have a TFT LCD screen uh, with a SD card reader <coughs> that you can find for $12. An SD card on Amazon, I found them on at $7. Maybe you can find cheaper ones on, let's say, Alibaba or things like this. Access to a 3D printer. It depends on if you have, I think you have a hackerspace in uh, Bergen, right? Yeah, sure. I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you should. All right, so maybe they have a 3D printer, or if you have a uh, hackerspace near you, maybe they have a 3D printer and they can do it for you. You also need wire and solder. Be careful, it, you can burn yourself. I did several times by making this one, so. <laughs> The main component of password is uh, TNC 3.0, I'd say. <coughs> uh, it's an ARM core. It has many in and outputs. It can use uh, UART, uh, serial lines. It can use SPI lines. It has uh, uh, capacitive inputs, so you can detect if uh, you use your finger to actually activate an input. That's a great thing. You can use it with the Arduino ID. Everyone knows uh, the Arduino. And one of the cool things is that it has an internal RTC. So you just need to add a, a simple crystal on the board and uh, with a battery, you can save the, the date and time, which is quite useful for the, the OTP. And yeah, it's just awesome. You can do. Many, many things with this. This is really great. <coughs> so, as we have told you, everything is written using the Arduino IDE. So, you can just get the code, write it. I tried to make as many comments as possible, so it's quite easy for you to <coughs> actually know exactly what happens and customize it 
on your needs. You can change, let's say, the, the screen colors. You can change the, the pin code. You can change uh, the number of lines, the, the size of the, uh, of the lines that are written on the screen, etc., etc. It's really easy to do it. So, <coughs> yeah, just try it and have fun with that. All the things that you need to change are <coughs> on the beginning of the source code. So normally you have to change uh, the AES key. You have to change the, uh, the master password that you can use to unlock the device. You can also change if you like to add more buttons. You can add them in the code. There, is, there are some constants to, <coughs> to actually know what you can do with the buttons. So you can add one of them two of them or anything like this. Normally, it's pretty easy. <coughs> Regarding the SD card, we use a simple FAT system. So every account you create and store in Passware is stored in a single file, a simple file. <coughs> so it's easy to create the backups. You just plug, your, plug the SD card on your PC, copy the files, get them somewhere, and that's it. And the only problem is that uh, the file names are limited. So you can only create uh, files that are uh, eight characters long. That's, that may be a limitation. So if you navigate using the password, you cannot set uh, account names that are longer than eight for the moment. That may be a problem. Just to show you, this is the file format. So we have a header with 42, just a random value. <laughs> Quite random. Nice <laughs> try. <coughs> then you can choose the file type. Uh, one is for a username password file. Two is for an OTP file. You can add, as having project to add like three to encrypt uh, a file, a complete file. So you can just upload a file that will be stored securely, I hope, in the device. And then, after that, so you can have many sections which contains an ID. For the moment, we only have a username, password, and then the length of the data, and then the AAS blocks that are encrypted containing your data, your username or your password. Everything is encrypted. The username, the password, the seeds, etc. So, normally, it should be quite secure. The most important thing to uh, actually protect is the AES key. <coughs> so what do we do exactly in, inside the TNC is uh, we only load the, the AES key to RAM only when the uh, password is unlocked. This is important, so you cannot just plug it and the, the key will be loaded. It's only loaded when you actually unlock the, the device. So normally from a, uh, an external point of view, you cannot actually connect to the TNC and get the key uh, with a bus pirate or a debugging access. Normally, it should be working. The AES key is normally <coughs> stored in the APROM. Again, we <coughs> plan to use the internal fuses of the, of the chip to protect the APROM for, from being read uh, from with an external tool. Or if you just remove the chip and plug it in, a, in an EEPROM reader, you cannot actually get it normally. And yeah, the AES key is cleared from memory as soon as the device is locked again. So just unplug it. <coughs> it will, <coughs> sorry. It will uh, clear the, the AES key from memory. And most of the thing, uh, I was thinking also about uh, changing the way the AES key is stored in the device. I was maybe thinking to store the AES key one half of the AES key in the actually in the program memory of the chip, and the other the other half in the EEPROM. So, if you want to actually get the whole AES key, you'll have to <coughs> find a way to get into the program code and get the key. And afterwards, you have to actually find another way to get the EEPROM access to the EEPROM to get the other part of the key. So, it will be much difficult if you find or if you steal a, a password from, uh, from someone to actually get the right key. 
I think that's, that would be much efficient to actually do it that way. <coughs> Regarding the memory, the problem is that it's a really small chip. It has not many RAM. It has, I think it's uh, 16K of RAM. So it's not that easy to actually <coughs> uh, encrypt or decrypt large block of data. And you have also to, to, to load all the AES stuff into RAM to actually compute everything. So <coughs> this has, there's, there are many uh, constraints to, um, to be, uh, for it to be efficient. So we, are, we have tried to <coughs> actually clean the memory as soon as, as it is not used anymore. We are trying to uh, clear everything, just remove the memory blocks, uh, clear them to, uh, to zero if we actually load the password. We just clear it right after it's, uh, it has been used. So normally you won't be, uh, be able to retrieve some data while it's in use or even if it has been uh, unplugged. To be more efficient, <coughs> the password uses a uh, serial communication with uh, your laptop. So <coughs> when you plug it, uh, you can just keep a button pressed to actually get into uh, a special mode, which is the command mode. So as soon as this command mode is activated, you have to, play, uh, to write your pin. And when you, uh, you have made your pin, mm -hmm. That's strange, right? Okay. Uh, the serial line is activated, and we've created a client application to send commands to <coughs> the password, to store new passwords, to delete an account, to modify an account if you've changed your password. It can be, <coughs> it can be updated on, your, on the password. This is a good thing. One of the other things is that you can only push new data. You cannot retrieve it from the application or from uh, the serial mode, so it's kind of uh, a box. You just put your secrets in, the, in that box, it will be encrypted, and you cannot get it back directly. The only way to get data back is to actually read, the, read, on the, read it on the screen, or if you want to type the password, press a button, and it will type your password in the field you have, se you have selected. That link is also used to synchronize the, the internal clock. So if your OTP is not working anymore, maybe you should uh, synchronize the RTC. Normally, it, it works uh, quite well, as the test we, uh, we've done <coughs> seem, to be, seem to be really good. But there may be, uh, there may be some problems with the, the RTC on the long-term use. Regarding the communication protocol, it's quite simple. It's quite the same also as the, as the file system. You can just push new comments to say that, okay, create this new file on the, on the SD card and store in the section of the username that value. You just send it clear text. The password will encrypt it, store it in the SD card, clean its memory, and your password is protected in the device. As we said, there are two modes, the command mode, <coughs> which is a simple serial line, and in the normal mode, the device is only seen as a, as a USB keyboard. So you can just use it to actually type your passwords for you. That, that's a great option. The application is developed in Python with Qt4 interface. <coughs> it's quite a simple interface. Just have on the left uh, the, the tree of the files, the, the files and folders that you have stored. <coughs> you can create a new folder, you can add a new, uh, a new, add a new account and create an OTP uh, by just putting the, the name of the account and the seed that is used and it will do all the rest for you. The communication starts <coughs> with the password sending 4242, again random values. Then the, the client application just sends its command the password will, resp will reply with a zero if something went wrong or <coughs> uh, with a one if everything went okay. There are commands to uh, actually 
lists the root directory. <coughs> so the command is, oh, mm, can you see it? OK, so the command is 4 for listing. 0, 1 is the length of the parameter. And slash is just read the, the root of the SD card. The same for the, uh, the username. 0, 1 is the command. <coughs> 11 is the total length of the packet. 5 is uh, the length of the file, which is slash toto. 0, 1 is for the file type. It's 0, 1. It's a username, <coughs> password kind of file. 0, 1 is we want to update the field number 1, the username. 8 is for the length, and password is the new value that needs to be stored in the, uh, in the, um, in the password. So it's quite easy. Again, everything is documented. So if you like to create <coughs> or add a new comment, all the processing stuff is created. Just add a new comment, a new function in the, in the code, and you're ready to go. Again, so if you had to create a new um, client application, everything uh, about the protocol is documented. So you can create a new application if you like to in .NET or everything else. So it's time for a demo now. I'm going to try a, a live demo. So I'm connect to my VPN, and I want to connect to my uh, Raspberry Pi in my home. So the device is here, and I just plug it. I need to unlock the device. I show uh, after I show a video of the. Uh, what I do in the in the device. Hmm? I select my Raspberry. Normally, I just hit the, the enter button, and I can log in. <coughs> so I can show you. <laughs> no. Okay, it's what's happening on the device. <laughs> so I select my the private uh, folder. It's the value for the Raspberry with my user and my password. Then just hit the the enter but the enter button. Everything works. <coughs> so the roadmap now we in the it's a beta version. You can see it. <laughs> um, only the basic function uh, working. Uh, we release the code uh, after the conference. Uh, normally, we have a first table uh, version for January. Um, 
for the moment, we use a, a null uh, ID, and we <laughs> it's your ID, <laughs> and we want to add uh, an ID uh, which is stored in the in the start of if each file. Um, uh, use the uh, the hardware fuse to protect the the EEPROM is not in place for the moment. Uh, and we want to fix uh, the problem with the communication uh, and with the file format. Uh, the future years improvement, uh, we want to create a, a password generator so we can use the, the touch button for, you just pass your hand in the touch button for generate a password. Um, be compatible with uh, other uh, UTP protocol like uh, HOTP. Uh, we want to use uh, USB as a file storage, but for the moment, TNC 3.0 is not uh, able to to read a uh, USB. Is right on. Can it act as a <coughs> as a USB key for the moment? So. Uh, on the previous versions, the TNC 1.0 and 2.0, uh, there is the possibility to <coughs> actually um, uh, act as a USB drive. So we might be able to emulate a file. So maybe you can store your SSH, SSH private keys on it. It will be stored uh, like every other password. And if you want to actually get them back, uh, just press enter and will be, it will be mounted as a USB drive and just copy the file. So we can use it to actually log in as a with your SSH uh, private key. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> why we are here? <laughs> uh, because we need to audit the the project. Um, maybe we make some uh, mistake. Uh, maybe there are some bug, and. Uh, we really suck at crypto, <laughs> so we think we're doing uh, the things good, but maybe it's not the case. And uh, we have basic knowledge of uh, hardware hacking, but maybe it's possible to, to get the key from the, the EEPROM uh, in a way we didn't think. So, uh, sorry, we need you. <laughs> So come uh, talk with us and uh, download the project, uh, make your own, uh, report the bug, and we, we can improve uh, all the projects. Well, you store all this on hardware in your pocket instead yeah. of somewhere in the cloud. Mm -hmm. I still need a backup though. You can do it. Yeah. For the moment, you cannot uh, actually back up the AES key. <coughs> It's only stored on the device, and there's no way for the moment to actually get it back. So we don't know if it's a good thing or not to export actually be itself. able to <laughs> export the, the key or not. So it depends. It depends. We, we were not sure <coughs> that it would be safe to be able <coughs> to actually read the key in a way or in another. So for the moment, it's only on the device, and there's no way to actually get it. Well, <coughs> this is how it is done in, in other systems. Okay. In, in big, like, <coughs> another thing, yeah. Is roughly this way. So uh, it is much better than just exporting on the master. Your I AS key should not be exportable. Mm -hmm. It's never there. At all, yeah. Okay. But uh, again, you can set uh, the key as you want. So you need to actually put the key. Uh, when you when you start the pro the the password, you have to set the key in the EEPROM first. So you have to use a, a key loader that <coughs> just sets the the key value that will be stored in the EEPROM at the moment, 
and uh, afterwards you can actually uh, flash the, the password with the, the right firmware that will use that key. So <coughs> there, there is a, a moment in the life of the, uh, <coughs> of the, ta of the password that uh, you, have, you actually have to write the key by yourself. So maybe you can just copy it on a sheet of paper under your keyboard. That's what you, uh, you need to do, right? <coughs> so, yeah, you, there is a moment where you, you know the key and you have to set it. But afterwards, I think the best way is to not be able to mm -hmm. actually retrieve that key. I have lots of questions and comments. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I'll try to be not too harsh on you guys. <laughs> because I like the idea. Mm -hmm. But I think the usability sucks. Mm -hmm. um, it's a device with a small screen with four buttons. Yeah. And even with a single button, uh, it's easy to see people, they just don't understand how to use a single button. And you most probably haven't done any usability cases on how big should a display be yeah. and what the kind of font should be using. And I'm not sure if you had, have implemented Kyrillic or simplified Chinese support into your device. Mm. Well, uh, <laughs> 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 of course you don't have RFID or Bluetooth support. Mm. Unicode in general. Uh, and it's a hardware device and everybody will, they will either lose it, someone will steal it, or they will just forget it at home. Mm -hmm. Like Jan Fredrik told me a long time ago, two-factor authentication is usually one thing you remember, one thing you forgot at home. That's the <laughs> simple thing. So in a way, we do need a backup solution, but we can't have a backup solution which is insecure. <laughs> That's a challenge uh, for such a device. Um, and the, it's very easy to pay to make as long as you do have access to a 3D printer, which I don't know anybody who has one. So eventually I have to <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But there are so many more, more things. I, I mean, I mean, kudos to you guys for, for doing this because it's really interesting. But again, I think also our friends from Cambridge might have a couple of comments for you later on as well. Mm -hmm. Because they are working on a Peacock project and they are trying to solve, in a way, the same problem you are getting rid of passwords or having to remember them. But they are, pr they are trying to create a device that, will, that you can use to authenticate to anything and you will not have to uh, remember or relate to usernames and passwords at all, basically, if, if, I, if I understand the project right. So uh, that's... Uh, you, you, you need to talk to the people who have thought from Cambridge. Sure. Absolutely. But there are so many things about the usability aspect. Of it. And when I go around and look at websites, all kinds of security uh, solutions or attempted solutions to, to solve different problems, uh, they can have very good security, but the usability is you know, below zero. And then you could go to people that work with the usability design, and they can make usable solutions, but security completely sucks. And finding a combination of those two is very difficult. It's very rare to see that. And just um, a month ago, two months ago, there was a presentation uh, in Moscow where uh, people from Facebook were presenting, the, the security team at Facebook was presenting. And Facebook has now decided to use uh, two different solutions for two-factor authentication all employees of Facebook. The first device, the hardware device, is the uh, YubiKey mm -hmm. from the Swedish company Yubico, which I guess you know about. And the other solution is uh, a more software-based solution <coughs> from the Duo Security in the US. And both Yubico and Duo Security are now, of course, using absolutely all kind of marketing channels to market the simple fact that their solutions have now been picked by Facebook. Facebook for all employees. And in case you would ever consider making money on this, those are the guys you're competing against. Mm -hmm. No, again, it's, uh, it's just a, a hobbyist thing, I think. It's 
just for people, but <coughs> the thing is that we we think that you add security by, keep, by keeping the, the passwords on you. That's that's the difference between uh, every other solutions that you can find, like LastPass or KeyPass or things like this, that is actually stored on, you on, on your laptop, that also can be still stolen. Mm. <coughs> so yeah, it's quite the, s they are the same problems, but yeah, since passwords are still used everywhere. So. Mm. This is our proposal for a solution for that kind of problem. Mm. Like we don't, <coughs> it's not the, the the purpose to to be sold or thing like this. It's just to have something that is quite cheap to create that you can do it uh, on your own and with you a 3D printer or <laughs> you can use a <laughs> another <laughs> box or thing like this. <laughs> <laughs> and or maybe you ju uh, just ask me. <laughs> I'll print you a box and send it to yourself <laughs> 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 if you want to. So <coughs> no, this is just a hobby, and we are trying to provide a way. To <coughs> to actually have uh, a device that is quite good to use, maybe it's not the best way to to do it. Maybe there are improvements to so that's why it's open source. You you can just improve it the way you like it. How so far? How much time or how much effort have you put into trying to attack your own solution to crack it? Well, I spent uh, several evenings on it. Because, yeah, I do play a lot with the teensies, uh, etc. So, <coughs> for the moment, I didn't find any way uh, when you use the fuse, the hardware fuses, to actually get the the AS key. And for the moment, I didn't find any way to get it. I know for uh, AVR chips, there are ways to bypass the fuses or reset the fuses without losing the the data. But I'm not sure it's possible. I didn't see anything on that kind of chips. Mm. So for the moment, I think it's OK. Sounds like we have a reverse engineering competition tomorrow for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. I have a comment and a question. The comment is that uh, password 13 in Las Vegas, there was a talk uh, by my colleague about uh, like using an Android device, like a sort of So can you repeat? Uh, how, how is your device locked and unlocked? Yeah. Uh, so okay, so the question is, uh, can you, <coughs> can you uh, how do you lock and unlock the device, right? Okay. How it works internally? So <coughs> internally. Something, something or so internally, um, when you get to, the, to the, the, the locking system, everything in the memory is cleared. In the, in the first time, and then you, uh, you are in an, in an infinite loop <coughs> that waits for, for you to enter your PIN code. And if the PIN code is correct, it will break from the loop and then get in the menu again. How do you determine if the PIN is correct? Do you store some sort of hash on the PIN, or and where do you store it? For the moment, it's stored in the, in the, in the source code. So you have to actually get in a, into the code to change the, uh, the PIN code. And <coughs> That's why we used for the moment. So currently, you don't need to dump the EEPROM, so you, you only need to dump the like running program if you can, and you, yeah. you, you will get the thing. If it would be possible, yeah. Thank you. So to break into this box, I wouldn't need the box. I would just need the source code to compile the new computer. Everything is from the USB. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, so when we finished Pico, we, we talk, um, what front of Frank's original ideas, um, which we'll hopefully explore in the next few months, whether, whether it actually makes sense, is to build a charging station such that you set up a relationship with that um, and it delegates your credentials and the, the key that the charging station then has. 
so that you have a backup that people actually do. Because you know that people will never do backups until they actually yeah. do something. Um, and so, but by actually force, forcing, forcing people to do a backup, essentially you know, implicitly. So I don't know whether that, that applies to that kind of use case. And I don't know whether um, something where whenever you connect it in the command mode, maybe actually a separate hardware device it backs up onto that you keep at home might actually be quite a sensible solution. Because I kind of like, um, obviously there's lots of like stuff that doesn't quite work um, yet, but there's, there's, it's quite a nice idea that we try and push push these kind of credentials that we perhaps care about off a general purpose computing platform onto something more specific because we don't trust the general purpose computing platform. Sorry, that wasn't really a question for me. <laughs> <laughs> device, I, I, I need to connect it to a computer or I need to log into a device and transfer some data onto it. Now, what if the computer that I'm using is in some way compromised? Mm -hmm. uh, have you any kind of checks either in your client or on the device that will remove traces from like the host computer so that, as Jan Felix said, if your source code uh, is compromised, it, the device is still not compromised. Are you <coughs> looking into um, to do that? Because, I mean, the PC obviously has malware. I mean, yeah. that's obvious today to me. So uh, the thing is that uh, the, the device only acts uh, as a USB keyboard. So you can just plug it. There's no way to actually send commands to it unless you get into command mode. But you have to press a button, power off, uh, power on the device, wait for two seconds with the button pressed, and afterwards you have to type your, uh, your pin code and then you are in the command mode. So you cannot accidentally uh, get into command mode on an unknown computer. And you have to enter a pin code. Yep. Somebody yep. steals the device from me and I will be, be like lots of other people. I will be using my birth name as my pin code. Mm -hmm. Can I have something else than just a four-digit pin code? You can just set the length of the pin code. Mm -hmm. For the moment, that's one of the user usability problems you, you told. Uh, for the moment, the pin code is can only be typed with the, the four buttons. So it's more a sequence than a, than a pin code or a password. But Your password has to be a minimum of 17 mix out of American. <laughs> 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 yeah, but so... Yeah, for the pin code, it's that's much easier, I think, to just press a sequence of, of buttons. You just can set the, the length of it, so you can just make a sequence of uh, 14 presses of different buttons, if you like to. <coughs> so yeah, again, the thing is, uh, you have it on you, you, just like your keys. So if uh, someone gets your keys, mm -hmm. yeah, well, he, he has to know uh, your address, but if he has your keys, he can open your uh, your lock and get into your house or something like this. That's quite the same. The thing that makes it secure is that you have it on you. And how, how exactly do I go about entering a new password into it? The full procedure? Yeah. Well, you, you start uh, the command mode, and, then, and then you... Starting the command mode is a sequence of operations as well, right? Yep. So I have to s turn off the device, yeah. and I have to s turn it on while holding a key, Exactly. and then wait for the command mode to initialize, yeah. which has now taken me what, how long? And you said this is easy to use. <laughs> oh, it's right, three th yeah. Yeah. it's, it's only three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> to actually put new passwords, you don't do that that often normally. Oh, really? You have a serious interest in passwords, you are registering on tens of, or maybe hundreds of websites every week just mm -hmm. to look at the password mm -hmm. policy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I, I didn't tell you that it would be easy to mm -hmm. do a <laughs> 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 This is, you know, like, yeah. I, I gave you proof, so I mean. <laughs> Alright, so, okay. so now I've started it up, and then, then what? Do I have to use some kind of software to. Yeah, you launched the. Uh, the client uh, software. Right, so I have to be at my computer to enter a new password. Yeah. Oh. And it's only on computer you normally trust. Right. So 
Yeah, that's that's one improvement that you could consider, at least when you get the USB support. Very common for, uh, for instance, hardware encrypted USBs and all that is to have a two partition mm -hmm. device. With the so that you yeah, so mm. that you keep the client software mm -hmm. off the computer that you're running it off. You still don't have a trusted path from the keyboard into the client, but uh, and you don't have a trusted memory. But at least the client software itself should be reasonably secure. Mm -hmm. So of course you can also either uh, decrease or increase the number of buttons on the device if needed, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, because yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking about the concept of having four buttons and how you can use that in a very usable way, easy way, to enter either uh, a normal OTP thing or a longer thing or even, even a password. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really doesn't make too much sense for me on how would you be using four buttons to enter a pin code very easily, as an example. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you could use left and right and go left and right and then up and down and go counter up and down between zero and nine, but again, you, that would also take a lot of time to, mm, to type your anything code, exactly. else. Yeah, then, then people would be using 0000, zero, zero, zero as an example, <laughs> because that would be very quick to enter. Mm. And then you have bad security again. But you know, this is at least as, as secure as uh, US nuclear. <laughs> 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 that was actually an 8 zero, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Would it maybe be easier with this kind of device to just have the device create passwords for you and then just change it on the whatever website or application you're using at the time when you This is a possibility. Just register it. Then yeah, you would never point. have to launch the client software. You could do some simple interface via the device itself. Directly on the client, exactly. The other thing is that uh, we only provide the four buttons because uh, I found quite cool to use the, the touch inputs. <coughs> but you can also uh, add a keypad. You know, the, the small keypads, mm. just mm. wire them to, to the TNC device, add code to handle the, the signals, and, and you're, uh, you're good to go. So you can make it the way you, uh, the way you want it. That's mm. the simplest design we have thought. Mm. But you can also um, maybe connect a full, key, uh, full keyboard. Mm. There are, you have uh, industrial keyboards that you can actually use and connect to the TNC and use it as a, as a real keyboard. But that would be quite <laughs> 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 Bring up the mic. <laughs> Voice recognition. <laughs> Voice recognition, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we... My voice is my fingerprint. Please identify me. Yeah. Any, uh, any other boards or architectures that would be suitable instead of the TNC? Uh, that you know of? Uh, well, <laughs> you should be able to do it uh, on an Arduino, but the thing is that uh, it doesn't emulate uh, keyboards, so you lose the, the ability to let the device type the password for you. You have the Leonardo that actually emulates a keyboard, and uh -huh. maybe you can also use a, a TC 2.0, but it doesn't have a touch input, so <laughs> that's and less fun. And FCR 5 and 72 BIOS instead of Bluetooth. But for which usage, exactly? Then somebody can sniff it. But isn't that what you're thinking about Tikuda to do it wireless? Yeah. Um, with with some protocol that doesn't yeah, exist. You, yes, to some protocol. <laughs> 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 um, I guess we all these things we're trying to actually frame a threat model. Because if your threat model is only a remote attacker or someone stealing your device, then you, you're perhaps less worried about someone observing you use it. So for Pico, we're, we're, we're kind of struggling with how can we have a usable way of bootstrapping a secure connection somehow out of bands and wireless. Um, especially when you boot, boot it sort of gets you to check if things the same on both things, which is quite naff if you can do it. Mm. Um, yeah, it's difficult. And that's why it's a research project. Right? More questions, comments? Uh, I was under the impression that the, the presentation started uh, Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, keep keep another way to uh, to watch the presentation on video. Or? Yeah, we have been recording, so we will put out on video very very soon. Yeah, yeah. People are starting to fall asleep after the uh, after the uh, crossword puzzle, so we have to stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh, there we are. Our final speaker for the day. Yep. Cool. But that is <coughs> this is just to illustrate that That's this is the same problem. Yeah. Yeah for every kind of device, not only uh, 
not only key pass and something like this, but also for password. So just took this exclusive. This is simple rule for you know IT service desk or the police or uh, any kind of special government or agencies. This is a very simple solution to your difficult problem. Gives you an he gives you your password. Okay, well then thank you guys. <laughs>